just take a look at this. Um, this is a picture we can show you here that has been covered up. It's a, a constable painting, that bucolic scene, the Hay Wayne. Uh, climate protesters have covered it up. They then glued themselves to the frame of the painting. Uh, we can talk to Emma Brown from Just Stop Oil. Hello to you, Emma. Um, it's a masterpiece, uh, a treasure of the nation, you might say, that particular painting. Can you understand why many people will be outraged by what you did? Um, I think we need to look at the bigger picture here. So we're <laughs> demanding that the UK government stop licensing and consents for the 40 new oil and gas projects that they're proposing to push through this year. We need to be outraged at that. I don't know if you saw the video um, from the action on the Hay Wayne, but there were a group of 11-year-old school children that were in the gallery at the time. And they were applauding us because we seem to be the only adults that are standing up for their future. And if they get it, why don't you? We are looking or at the video, actually, of the painting being covered up in just the way you've described. Is, though, damaging national art the best way to persuade people? You persuaded that group of school kids, as you said, uh, or certainly they were supporting you. Uh, is it the best way and most effective way to bring people over to your side of the argument? OK, so, so first of all, we had a statement from the National Gallery that there was minor damage to the frame and the varnish, which has already been successfully dealt with, so we're not damaging artwork. The UK government are criminally damaging our planet, you know, and, and civil resistance has shown throughout history, as much as they try and pr persuade us that it doesn't, it's proven to be the last best hope. And young people are terrified about the future and they have a perfect right to be. And we are also incredibly angry at the failure of this government. And that's why we're taking any necessary peaceful action that we can to, to really ram this point home because we don't have a lot of time and we're in a very serious situation. All right, Emma, I'm going to ask the panel to respond. So stay, stay with us. Um, Mark, obviously you're not in the government, but what would you like to say to Emma? Do you support this sort of action? Well, I don't, and, and I think they're fundamentally mistaken. I mean, the government has a very uh, strong commitment to achieving net zero by 2050. Uh, we hosted a successful uh, conference in Glasgow. Uh, on the fossil fuel thing specifically, which is what I think they're campaigning against, we're going to be using gas as a transition fuel for the next decade or so. And it seems to me it's much better if we use domestic UK supplies of oil and gas rather than buying it from dictators like Vladimir Putin, for example, who use the money for their uh, warmongering in Ukraine, uh, or we ship it halfway around the world. So if you're going to use fossil fuels, which we're going to be using for an another decade or so, it seems to me much better to get them from the UK continental shelf rather than importing them from dictators around the world. And that's, that's where I think they're fundamentally mistaken, um, because we are going to be using fossil fuels right. for, the, for the next... Ten years Emma, do so. you want to respond to what Mark said? Um, yeah, I'd like to respond to that. Um, first of all, the UK government, according to their own statistics, we have eight years left in reserves in the gas and oil fields that we already have. We need to use that to transition. The UN, the International Energy Agency, everyone is saying that we cannot invest in any new oil and gas projects this year. This is also setting out a terrible precedent to the rest of the world that they can continue that. We cannot continue this. And the government's own climate change committee has voiced fears. Last week, there was a damning report that they are having major policy failures, the scant evidence of delivery, and they are willing the ends, but not the means. This report showed that present plans will not fulfil the commitment to net zero. Okay. So I'm afraid your government minister is lying to us. Well, he's not a minister, um, and he's not lying. Um, he's not a minister. Well, I can't he is see a conservative. Like he's a no. He's a conservative. Screen. He's a conservative MP. I know you can't see anybody. You're at a disadvantage mm. in that sense, as these yeah. panelists know themselves, because they've pinned down the line so many times. <laughs> um, Anoush, what did you make of the protest itself when you saw the painting being covered up? Well, I thought it was a very imaginative protest, and I, I'd have to say, if I was one of those 11-year-olds on a school trip, that would have been the most exciting school trip to the National Gallery. For me. <laughs> So I think it must have been quite fun. <laughs> I, think, I think these kind of eye-catching, sort of quite outrageous protests are, can be very effective. I mean, look, we're talking about it on this programme yes. now, for example. But something that I find particularly interesting about Just Stop Oil is that they say that they got their inspiration from those lorry driver protesters back in 2000, um, which is um, sort of perhaps an irony, because they might be on sort of both sides of fossil fuel use, for example. But um, those, those protests were extremely effective and the Labour government cut fuel duty the following year. So they can work. Tim? It's not hard to impress 11-year-olds. They believe in Santa Claus. I mean, it's, it, I don't know why people keep saying... They were doing all sorts of arguments, and I met some children, and they agreed with me. Because they're kids. They don't understand the complexities. And also, they don't have to pay the damn bills. 
The morality is not all on one side. I agree. We've got to move away from fossil fuels. We've got to green the planet. We've got to do this in particularly for developing nations. But governments also have a responsibility to make sure that people don't shiver and freeze at winter. You have to provide energy. Gas and oil are going to be a transitional fuel. I'm sorry it's not nice, it's dirty, but we're going to have to do it because you have a responsibility to consumers. Emma? That's not good enough. I need to, we need to plug into the reality of the situation. In Italy, they've declared the state of emergency because of drought. There's 4 million people that have been displaced by floods in Bangladesh. Thousands of people are being evacuated from their homes in Sydney. The UK is not immune to a global crisis. Yeah. In fact, Mark Harper said, I was listening earlier, we have the duty to protect vulnerable people. We have the duty not to be creating more victims. At the moment, that is exactly what they are doing. This is the no. first... Okay, and, and what, okay, so what about people who are choosing between feeding or heating their homes? That is your own fault. Why have you not, not insulated fault. homes? Why are you not investing in clean, affordable energy, which is so we much are. cheaper? Investing in new oil and gas, Kwasi Kwarteng has said himself, will not right. reduce energy bills because it's for private company's profit. And that's right. the truth. Kirsten? I, I think it's really interesting what Emma's seeing, actually. I'm, and the protest uh, itself, the covering well, up Well, I'm glad that the painting the is OK, but I think that finding imaginative ways to hook people in is perfectly reasonable. So, you know, it, you know it's um, obviously something you'd want to be very careful about. I'm not sure I would uh, be going away and, and doing that particular means of protest myself. But, yeah, I've been on climate marches uh, mm. with 11-year-olds. Um, there's nothing wrong with their critical thinking on this. And actually, you know, perhaps we need to take a, a little bit more of that straightforward thinking that you might get from these groups of younger people because actually, fundamentally, we can't go on as we are. The UK government should step up and uh, do their bit in terms of funding Just Transition. The, the Scottish government have done that. We cannot carry on as things have been done. And, you know, either we, we take steps, as um, the, these protesters oh, no. are looking for us to do, uh, really we're not. We're not taking nearly enough steps. Oh, um, right. Or we have to deal with the consequences. And, that you know, that's something that we have to be real about. Well, I suppose the next question is, how far are you and your colleagues, Emma, prepared to go? Because uh, the headline in the Metro paper, we can't show it to you just at the moment, but it says, protesters sit on Silverstone track after horror crash at British Grand Prix. Oh, there it is. Um, others, not you, from Just Stop All, invaded the racing track uh, at the Grand Prix on Sunday not uh, putting your own lives at risk, actually, as well as uh, those racing drivers and stewards. Um, are you really prepared to risk your own lives for this? Um, honestly, Joe, our lives are at risk. So is that I so don't yes? understand. Well, our lives are at risk and we're willing to do whatever peaceful protest we can. I mean, the Formula One is dangerous. We saw an accident that was nothing to do with us. No one was hurt in that. People are being hurt right now. And at the moment, we have a small and vanishing window of time to take action. That action is not being taken. Mark Harper has also voted against every piece of climate legislation, no, no, including, no, the, that, that, you have, no, including the no, no. 2015 legislation well, let him, let him to, to raise, let the, him standards, let him to raise the standards of, of um, insulation in newly built homes from 2015. Right, well, we Emma, even voted against that. Uh, Emma, let, it, let him against. respond because you've made, you've made that. I voted in favour of the legal um, change that we made to make sure we had to get to net zero by 2050. Just or because I don't maybe. agree, just because I don't agree with every single idea that somebody puts forward how to get there, doesn't mean I'm against it. I, I support what we're doing to try and get towards net zero. But Tim's right; you have to do it in a sensible way so you continue making sure people have got the energy they need to keep warm, to power the economy, uh, and to deliver net zero. And that's what the government's doing. All right, we're going to have to stop it there. Emma, thank you very much for joining us today. That's all we have time for, and there was quite a lot. I'll be back tomorrow at 11.15 for Prime Minister's Questions here on BBC Two and on the BBC iPlayer. From all of us here, thank you to my guests. Bye-bye.